Larry Carr. I'm a uh, longtime Morgan Hill resident, been engaged and active in my community uh, in uh, lots of different ways for many years. Um, Marty Cheek and I have been uh, friends for uh, uh, many, many, many years. Uh, we're both San Jose State alums, and uh, Marty and I were in the same leadership Morgan Hill class, the class of 2007, and got to spend a lot of time together and get to know each other a little bit more through that experience. Um, we have uh, talked for many years now uh, about the state of politics, both locally and across our country, uh, and things that are going on around the world. Um, and I share Marty's passion about things that are happening in our world today, and how we might as uh, individuals um, come together to try to uh, create a movement uh, based on the idea of creating a more peaceful world uh, for ourselves and for future generations. Uh, and I'm here today joined by Marty to talk about this. Um, Marty, introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. My name is Marty Cheek. I'm a 21-year uh, resident of Morgan Hill in Silicon Valley for many more years. Uh, I am the publisher of two newspapers, Morgan Hill Life and Gilroy Life, which are owned by Life Media Group, which I started with my business partner, Robert Aroldi, almost 10 years ago as a human benefit company to use media to, to improve our news marketing, education, and arts and entertainment for the greater good of not just communities, but everyone, all humanity. So uh, during that time, the idea of something called Vision 2020 has evolved. And uh, it's something that I have a passion for. I've worked weekends and weeknights to, to make this happen. And I think more than ever, we need Vision 2020. And we'll explain what that is in a little bit. But uh, I believe that we are at a time, a crisis time, but it's also an opportunity for humanity, not just to survive, but thrive in the coming decades and centuries, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Marty, thank you. Um, we're going to talk some more about Vision 2020. And I think um, most of us who know Marty know his passion around this topic. Um, but I want to start first. Tell me more, define better for us and help us understand what you mean by um, uh, Morgan Hill Life, uh, I'm sorry, Life Media Group being a human benefit company. Yeah, so uh, I wrote a book with Congressman Jerry McNerney uh, published almost 10 years ago called Clean Energy Nation, uh, Freeing America from the Tyranny of Fossil Fuels. And during that time when we were doing the research and the writing, I realized that if we're going to become uh, a, an uh, energy independent from fossil fuels, nation and world, we need, the first step is to educate people about the benefits and educate people on how we can achieve those goals. And then uh, af after the book was published, uh, I came up with the idea of Life Media Group as a company. I took a risk in building a business, a news biz newspaper, and uh, the idea was to grow it. It was helped hopefully for the Silicon Valley region, but that never <laughs> came about. But to create a human benefit company that improves the quality of life for everyone through news, marketing, education, and the arts and entertainment. So those four areas of um, mass media. And uh, the Vision 2020 movement just kind of evolved out of that. The Vision 2020's ultimate goal is global peace by Christmas Day in the year 2040. So a world forever free of wars and terrorism in the next, well, 18 years. The reason it's called Vision 2020 is I started around Christmas time, officially started around Christmas time in the year 2020, and it con connect, con um, connects with the idea of clear vision, 2020 vision. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I, as a, a frequent reader of, um, of your newspapers, Marty, I would say you're uh, achieving a lot of the goals that you set out. Uh, and I hope that you feel that way about Life Media Group um, and, uh, and keep striving for um, achieving those human benefits uh, that you want your corporation to, uh, to be known for. Uh, but let's talk a little bit more about uh, Vision 2020 um, and some of the things you hope to accomplish with it and why you think this is such an important movement for um, locally for us uh, to join and ultimately for all Americans to get behind. Well, I think... It Great things start off small. So we've been starting off with both our communities of Morgan Hill and Gilroy, telling people about Vision 2020. But now I'm looking at the state of our politics and our 
you know, current social society. And I realized it needs to go national. And uh, first step is Silicon Valley. I want people in Silicon Valley to learn about it, understand it and support it because this is something that will benefit them and, and their children and future generations in the long term. So a global peace movement um, using media, using the tools that we now have that we've had for the last maybe at least 20 years and maybe 30 years through the internet, through commerce, you know, global commerce. We're at a point where we can achieve this amazing goal that people have longed for for centuries, for millenniums. And now, uh, but we're also on the point of, we're on the path to oblivion. And uh, you look at our news stories, how sad they are and how depressing it can kind of be. And we're seeing that, you know, the potential of, you know, oblivion, people are talking about civil war now. I just read a survey that half the country thinks we're gonna be in a civil war. Um, not on the level of the American Civil War for the first one, but you know, more of a sectionalist type of war, like mm -hmm. what happened in Northern Ireland, you know, by domestic violence basically. And, and then um, if we fall, as far as our uh, nation falls to tyranny, if we lose our democracy, we will probably, I mean, almost certainly go into war with China sometime in the 2030s. And that's something, that's a war we cannot win and no one wants. And I'm sure Chinese people do not want that war either. So. The ultimate goal is Christmas Day, 2040, a world forever free of wars and terrorism. Well, I, I certainly support and like that goal because uh, the uh, alternative picture that you paint is pretty bleak and we want to do what we can to avoid that. Um, but you and I are both sitting here in Morgan Hill, California today, right in Silicon Valley. Um, the, you know, the hotbed of technology and the ways that we communicate across the world today. Um, how, are, how are we going to get Silicon Valley to get behind a movement like this and why should it be important to them? So I have, starting on July 4th, been sending email messages with a link to a survey uh, asking all elected officials and those who want to be elected officials, uh, candidates for office in the November 8th election, to take a survey, and it's probably a three minute survey at the most, with uh, 20 questions that ask, you know, what do they support in terms of global peace? Uh, to me, it's a no brainer. Uh, I've gotten some emails that were kind of scary in terms of, you know, some of the elected officials who won't name, but we're, you know, that is the first step is to get our leaders to commit to the cause of global peace. And uh, the next step uh, is to go to the ordinary people, people like me who are not in office, are not famous, are not definitely not rich, and ask them to support this. And if uh, there's an elected officials that represents them that is not you know, interested in supporting you know, global peace or taking the survey to show that, to show their commitment, then asking people to uh, encourage them to be part of this. Uh, we're Americans. I mean, Americans are at their best when we come together, when we bring ourselves together and do something audacious. And this is definitely, you know, <laughs> I've been told right. time and time, this, right. this is impossible. It's not, it's 100% possible. It might not be probable at this point in time, but that's a numbers game when we have more people who support that. There's a big benefit to this. If we can get 1% of the American population, 3.3 million people to support this, it will ignite a movement that will unite our, you know, our, our country around an audacious goal. And that's why I want the leaders to support this because they, they set the, the tone. The media also plays a big role in this. Um, as I say, the news media pushes the social will and the social will pushes the political will and that what's, that's what makes things happen. So I'm encouraging every newspaper or TV show or TV, a news show or radio show or um, podcast or any source of news to support this movement, um, or at least to inform people about it. And uh, inc mm -hmm. I encourage them to, you know, let people know about this. Um, we're we're at our best, like I said, when we're to get, we're joined together. And right now we're not, and we're becoming increasingly divided. And I believe the goals of Vision Twenty Twenty, and there's twenty ultimate goals, but the ult or twenty goals, but the ultimate goal is global peace will bring people together and unite us. Yeah. Now, Marty, I, I've seen the survey, and you're right, it, it's uh, 
um, it seems like it's a no brainer. It, uh, it uh, shouldn't take long to, to, for people to answer the questions. And it seems like uh, more than 1% of uh, the people that uh, are surrounding all of us every day um, should be able to get behind something that is just standing for peace and uh, prosperity. Um, what have been some of the responses you've gotten and, and, and why do you think it's difficult for, for an elected official to uh, respond? I don't know. Well, Larry, you were the very first one to take the survey. <laughs> so, and I appreciate that. So, but I think what it is, is there's this mindset that humans have that, you know, world peace is impossible. And we've been kind of drilled that. And we, you know, you look at history, you know, there've been minor movements to, you know, achieve global peace, but nothing using media, nothing using the, uh, you know, opportunities we have as, you know, technology. And, you know, our, we're far more interconnected world now than we were, you know, at least 20 years ago. And that gives us the opportunity. Also is a house of cards, you know, one thing falls and it starts to, you know, kind of fall, to, you know, break up and fall all together. So we can use the technology uh, to, um, you know, bring us together. But going back to the question, why are some leaders afraid to answer the questions? Yeah. Or, or, mm -hmm. um, moral courage. I think that might be the, 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 the fault that we have. Uh, people are afraid to take an audacious goal or, or, or take an audacious stand or uh, stand up for something, mostly because social media, you know, puts, makes them a target. Well, <laughs> You know, if, if you're going to fall for something, at least fall for global peace, you know, and uh, and I think you're not actually going to fall. People are going to stand up and, you know, applaud you for, you know, standing up for that. Probably, I have to be careful here, um, imagination. Uh, I think a lot of politicians lack imagination, lack the vision to see a better world. And maybe it might be a bit of intelligence, too. You know, uh, they, they're not aware of how we can do it. And so they just assume it's impossible. And so they're not gonna take you know, the survey, but I have a hunch that if we can get 100,000 ordinary people, nobody's like me to take the survey and show that there is public support for global peace, which is like you said, a no brainer, then I think the politicians are gonna stand up. And, but the, the thing is the news media needs to also stand up in terms of you know taking a stand in terms of you know, doing stories on this or even editorials supporting Vision 2020 and the idea of, you know, ultimate global peace in the next 18 years. Yeah. It's, it's the ultimate Christmas present. Think about it. Think what your children will do instead of a cashmere sweater or a video game or, you know, the latest fad toys. Global peace. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best. You know, as you're talking, Marty, I, I, I'm thinking you know, it's, it, it should be a, a, a topic and a goal that cuts across any party um, that should be a topic and a goal that unites us and doesn't divide us. Um, I think about uh, a country that used to um, uh, achieve big audacious goals, uh, landing a man on the moon, finding um, cures to uh, diseases uh, and, and getting behind and supporting something like global peace, again, seems like it's something that should be able to bring us all together uh, in the same direction of trying to achieve it. Yeah. Uh, and yet at times it's hard to even talk about uh, in the political climate uh, that we have right now. You brought up the moon landing. I mean, John F. Kennedy uh, set the world or, or at least America on a mission to bring or send men to the moon and back. Uh, and people thought this is impossible. I mean, engineers right. said right. this is not this is not possible or feasible in the in the in a decade. And yet, I think because he had a very clear mandate, and it was had a timeline, a deadline. That's why I include the Christmas Day 2040, which is actually we could achieve it in 10 years if we really truly wanted to. Um, but you know, 2040, you know, I think is a good you know realistic uh, goal date. And um, John F. Kennedy understood the human psychology. We unite when we have something to unite around. Yes. And our leaders have not given us anything, you know, either side have given us anything to really bring Americans together around. And I think global peace, regardless of what your politics are, that's something that people want. It's, it's a hunger, it's a desire for, you know, 
hundreds of centuries or centuries, you know, way back, going to, you know, probably the Iliad and, you know, the attack on Troy. So uh, we can achieve these goals. It's 100% possible. It's just that we need to, you know, take action now and unite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Mario, you talked a little bit about how Vision 2020 is different than, say, other movements around peace and freedom. I mean, we even have political parties that have called themselves the Peace and Freedom Party. Um, you're the owner and publisher of uh, a news media group and um, publishing two different newspapers um, here in Santa Clara County. Uh, is that where you see the main difference in this movement, a Vision 2020 movement, as compared to historically other movements around peace and freedom? Historically, we we haven't had the technology that we have now that interconnects us in ways, you know, as a global industrial civilization, we're connected now, rather, you know, regardless of, you know, where you are, you have connections to anyone literally in the world. Uh, and but we're not using that technology effectively for human benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, you know, it's particularly social media, which you know originates here in Silicon Valley. Shamefully, uh, we are you know disconnecting ourselves from each other and turning ourselves into tribal groups based on you know politics or society or religion or race. That's dangerous. And uh, but we can through life media group through our te through the technology we want to build we can connect people around the world as one um, human family. But it's, we want to start here in Silicon Valley and spread out through America, you know, bring everybody in, you know, who wants to support it. And then I think once we get, like I said, 3.3 million Americans to support this, people around the globe will say, yeah, um, those crazy Americans, <laughs> they want global peace. Maybe we can, maybe we can help them out. So ultimately, we need one, at least one percent of the human population to support the Vision 2020 Global Peace Movement. On November 15th, according to the United Nations, the world's population will surpass eight billion people. So one percent of that is 80 million people, eight zero million, and. Um, you know, there's been some popular Marvel movies that have surpassed 100,000 or 100 million people watching it. So if you can get 100 million people to watch superheroes, you know, hit each other and beat each other up to save the universe, I think you can get 80 million people to be what I call heroes for humanity and join together and, um, you know, truly save the, the world, <laughs> prevent a global, you know, nuclear war that, you know, could, you know, essentially obviously end civilization, but even bring an ex extinction to the human race and many other species. It, it seems like we should be able to get 1% of the people to do something. Um, uh, and e even though that number is a large number, that percentage is something that should be very achievable. Um, Marty, you and I have known each other a long time. Um, we, I, we know each other personally and professionally. Um, I, uh, you have written stories and covered me um, in different ways uh, through your paper and other things that you have done sometimes um, in, uh, you know, very good stories and sometimes uh, very difficult ones. But I've always uh, um, held you up to high esteem uh, in the things that a journalist ought to be doing in the way that a journalist goes about reporting things. And so I always appreciate that. But on a more personal level, Tell us a little bit about why you have so dedicated the Life Media Group to the Vision 2020 pursuit of a global peace movement. Well, it goes back to my mom, um, a beautiful woman. She looked like a movie star. She was, from, she was born in 1926 in Berlin, Germany. And for some God know, unknown reason or God known, knows reason, she married my dad in a little town called Hollister, came as an immigrant. But she grew up in Berlin in the 1930s, and she saw the rise of fascism. And she even met some of the uh, you know, prominent leaders. Um, in fact, she met, uh, just briefly, Joseph Goebbels, who was the propaganda minister, who really kind of was the uh, evil mastermind behind the uh, manipulation of the German mind through media. And um, she saw horrors. She saw you know, the horrors of war and, you know, bombings you know she survived you know the bombings and saw you know dead bodies on the street the next morning uh, and broken buildings or destroyed buildings um so in uh when i was 10 years old about 10 years old she took me to germany to see her homeland you know a little boy from hollister 
ranching town, you know, and here in Northern California, seeing the big city of Berlin, you know, and it was just amazing. And we uh, took a trip to uh, Kufersundam, which is like the Champs-Élysées equivalent, you know, in terms of Berlin's shopping district. Okay. And the first place we went was the Kaiser Wilhelm II Memorial Church, mm. which you probably haven't don't know the name, but you've seen the pictures of it. It's a bombed out church with some modern uh, church structures. And the Berliners kept that as a reminder of the horrors of war. This was a okay. prominent church at the very end of the, the big boulevard. And we went in and, um, you know, it was, it was a peace mo uh, memorial there. And I remember as a kid being very profoundly impacted by seeing the devastation of war. And then uh, later on, um, we went to a cafe uh, and I believe it was the Cafe Kranzler, but I'm not sure, but um, we had vanilla ice cream on the outside where the you know, people were talking or walking uh, on the pedestrians on the sidewalk. And uh, I asked my mom about what wars was like. Mm. She talked about the horrors of it and people dying, friends dying. And her brother was killed. Uh, he was dra drafted or into the, or conscripted into the army, the German army and died in Libya. And her eyes started tearing up right. at the memory. And in fact, my middle name is Gerhard after Gerhard Druckler, who was my uncle. And um, I could see how profoundly after even decades, you know, war really devastates, you know, families and, and my mom in particular in terms of her brother. And I made a promise to her. I said, mom, I'm gonna end war someday. I'm 10 years old, right? And she laughs, <laughs> but I've been thinking about that. I mean, it's a crazy thing to think about. How do you end wars? And uh, then when I started writing the book was, uh, Jerry McNerney, Congressman Jerry McNerney, Clean Energy Nation, I realized news media is powerful. It shapes opinions for good or ill. And then uh, that's one of the reasons I started Life Media Group to use it, you know, use media basically for the benefit of human humankind, starting locally. And then, you know, can, you know, in local news is the best news because it connects people. So uh, that's how sort of uh, my personal journey has been. Um, Believe me, it's been frustrating. There's been a lot of tears and a lot of shouts. I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm I'm obsessed with it. I'm dedicated, you know, and I people tell me you need to quit. And I said, no, I, you know, humanity. You know, what do you do as a human family if you don't save it? You know, and I'm asking everybody to be part of that journey. Um, and it's a very painful journey for me personally, but I think when more people come into it, um, you know, the joys of it, you know, if we can, you know, 18 years from now on Christmas Day, say, hey, what happened to wars? <laughs> Yay, we got rid of them. <laughs> got rid of them. <laughs> you have kids, right? Yeah. You must want a world that's forever free of wars for your, your children, your dear children. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what I think about um, whenever you and I talk about this, Marty, is uh, future generations. Um, and how do we make the world a better place for the next generation? I, I always feel like that is part of our responsibility uh, is to leave the world in a little bit better place than perhaps we inherited it for, uh, for our kids and for the next generation, for their kids, uh, and to keep moving forward along that. It's Marty, true. how can um, residents and businesses throughout Silicon Valley and ultimately around the globe uh, help achieve this, uh, this movement? Well, I'm going to be sending out through our website for our newspaper uh, the link to the survey that I've been sending out to uh, elected officials. I'm going to encourage hopefully 100,000 people will take this survey before September 21st, which is World Peace Day, because um, on, the, on that day at 530, we're going to have a uh, um, a special presentation or, or, or um, dedication, I should say, maybe is a better word, of a piece of art that's being installed in the Morgan Hill Civic Plaza called the Peace Project. And it's a couple of sisters, um, Janet Leach and Monica McClintock, are work, have been working for 10 years to put this together. And I, I invite everybody, anybody from the county of Silicon Valley who wants to come and see this beautiful piece of art when they're on the day of the installation at 5 30 on september 21st they're welcome or if you want to just stop by <laughs> later on after it's installed too and take a look it's a, an amazing work by an amazing artist who lives in los gatos who's very prominent and um 
I won't describe it, um, but I might show it, you know, if, if later on I can put this on the video. Um, that day, I hope, might be a historic day. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be if we can get the media involved and enough people involved in participating in that dedication, it might prompt more people around the world, or at least in Silicon Valley and nationally, and then hopefully around the world, to take this seriously. Because their lives and the lives of their children are really wrapped up in this, this movement if it succeeds. Um, I think a big part of the uh, thing that they can do is, or, or people can do, is believe. Believe mm -hmm. that peace is possible. Sure. And it really yeah. is. I mean, if you think logically about it, there's no nothing in science that says it's not possible. It's yeah. all it's all a mind game, and we've you know we played the game where we think it's not possible. Now we can win the game essentially if we say, yeah, it's possible. Um, part of that belief re requires commitment to the cause. Uh, be you know be willing to take part of it, act, be, act, take action, and also communicate. Communicate your uh, willingness to support you know vision 2020 especially to our elected leaders and the media too and so there's a lot we can do um it's going to take financing and it's going to take a lot of money i've gone mm -hmm. to venture capitalists and banks one banker called me a hippie <laughs> and i said you no that broadly didn't you <laughs> peace brother um and i said no i'm not a hippie i'm actually pretty conservative in my thinking but I believe that the human family needs to save itself from its own stupidity. And, that, and I explained it to him, you know, it's not about me being a hippie. I don't take drugs. I don't wear tie dye. Um, but financing is a very big part of this. And uh, it's going to, what I want to build is a system that improves our news media, our marketing media, our education media, and our arts and entertainment media for the benefit of all humanity. And it's going to take millions of dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, but I do yeah. believe, I do believe that if ordinary people can support this financially, you know, with, you know, dollars, uh, donations uh, to Life Media Group, and they're not tax deductible, let me be very frank about that, it's we're not a nonprofit, then I think if we can get enough people to support it, it will be the momentum will be, you know, start to roll, and this could be a big deal in terms of the next couple of years that people say, yeah, I support it. One of the fundraising things I have created is two books that I wrote during COVID. Um, one is a nonfiction book called Vision 2020, Be a Hero for Humanity, which pretty much lays out the, uh, the goals and um, won't go too much in detail because I wanna keep things private, but how do we can achieve this, you know, it's using media. <laughs> how can we achieve this goal in the next uh, 18 years now? The second one is a fiction book. I've written a lot of fiction books, but never published one. I self-published this one called Humanity, A Vision 2020 Novel. And it's a fast read. It ain't great literature. Look, look, I'm not Tolstoy or Dickens, I'll be honest with you, but it's a fast read. Chapters are short. And at the end, I, my hope is that people will change. They'll transform from reading this novel. Um, they'll start to see their fellow human beings as one human family and that we need to protect ourselves and our family uh, from our own stupidity. Yeah. So um, both books are available on amazon.com and I'll put the link later on into this Zoom call or Zoom um, podcast. Okay. Um, they're $30 a piece uh, and $15, roughly a little more than $15 from each one goes to, as royalties goes to the Life Media Group's um, support of vision 2020 to build the systems we want or if people want to just don't want to buy the book we have a, a paypal account that they can donate to too so but okay. i i want to encourage people buy the book because when amazon hits a certain number of sales it, it it becomes prominent and if we could hit 1 million sales before christmas uh it will be a miracle <laughs> i think but who knows <laughs> We could, we would get the attention of the news media and that will start the momentum rolling and we can maybe, yeah. even, you know, sell 1% uh, of the American population by Christmas Day, my hope is. I, I've read the novel, uh, Marty, and it's a, um, you're right, it's a quick read. It's a fun read and very thoughtful. 
Uh, so I would encourage people as well to um, to look that book up and uh, and give it a try. Thank um, you. I think people will enjoy it. Um, Marty, what uh, what have we missed today in our conversation? We had a great conversation. <laughs> Larry, this this has been good. Uh, I Thank generally you. am nervous uh, with these kind of things, but you kept me at ease. I just want to encourage people: be part of. If you, this is the old saying my dad used to say: if you ain't part of the solution, you're only part of the problem. And uh, I think we, great saying. Mm -hmm. We need people to be part of the solution, and I'm going to especially encourage families, especially with young children, because we can save potentially their lives or give them a better world. Educators teachers what i want to do is going to you know radically transform you know learning uh and i won't go into details on that but it will definitely make learning a lot more fun and a lot more effective and also our leaders uh, we need leaders with vision and uh, particularly vision 2020 but vision to see a better world and to be part of that so but yeah Larry, this is a great conversation. And uh... Marty, thank you for inviting me in this conversation with you. I, I've really enjoyed it. Um, again, for anyone who's watching, the book is great. Find it on Amazon. Um, you can go to the Life Media Group website to learn more about Vision 2020. Uh, and I would really encourage people to do that and educate themselves uh, about uh, this movement. Great. Larry, thanks so much. Yeah, Marty, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, take care. Bye-bye now.